Engineering Research Associates was a highly influential and pioneering computer company. It was founded in 1946 by a group of talented engineers, mathematicians, and scientists. ERA was created largely in response to a vital need to continue the work of highly talented cryptology specialists. Part of the U.S. Navy's OP-20G section, OP-20G's wartime mission was to intercept, decrypt, and analyze naval communications from Japanese, German, and Italian navies, and at times, diplomatic messages of foreign governments. Early cryptologists relied on specialized devices, called rapid analytical machines, to help break enemy codes. These machines predated digital computers. Wartime advancements in complex secret communication technologies by enemy forces had resulted in an urgent need to develop high-speed computing devices capable of breaking coded communications. The ongoing need for ever more powerful computing devices also continued beyond the end of World War II. High-speed computers and the men and women who designed and built them were essential to maintaining a balance of peace and power during the Cold War. The specialized group of cryptanalysts and engineers within the OP-20G had the deliberately nondescript name of Communication Supplementary Activity, Washington, abbreviated CSAW, sometimes referred to as Seesaw. The ERA team came from the highly secret and specialized world of cipher and code breaking that had gained significant importance during the early years of World War II. Their commanding officer was Captain Joseph Wenger. Wenger operated under the authority of the Chief of Naval Operations. Wenger discussed and approved a proposal from William Norris to form a private company to continue much-needed work in high-speed computing technologies. William Norris's early career included a visit to Bletchley Park in the UK. William Norris, along with Howard Engstrom, Ralph Mader, and John Parker, started ERA in 1946. 25 scientists and engineers from the CSAW joined the new company, which grew to over 50 employees in its first several years. Women played a key role not only in the early days of the CSAW, but in the top-secret work done by the ERA team on its Navy contracts. The United States Naval Computing Machine Laboratory, NCML, established in 1942, was a secret design and manufacturing site for code-breaking machines. Designs were partly based on work done at Bletchley Park, UK, and earlier pre-war Polish cryptanalytical work. Navy bomb machines were originally manufactured by National Cash Register, NCR, and located in Building 26, Dayton, Ohio. Over 600 Navy service women and others were instrumental in the production. The primary goal of the NCML was to develop a machine to decipher Enigma codes. In 1946, the NCML was moved to Washington to coincide with work being done by ERA personnel for OP-20G contracts. Ralph Mader was the Navy's lead manager at Building 26, the site used for the U.S. Naval Computing Machine Laboratory. One of ERA's pivotal contributions to early computing was rotating magnetic drum memory. The Navy contracted with ERA to design and build a series of highly advanced rotating magnetic drum memory computers of varying size, speed, and capacity. Magnetic drum memory computers were vital to meet the data storage needs and computational speed requirements of the Navy's top secret communications intelligence programs. ERA's technical developments influenced other computers, including the Whirlwind and the IBM 650 and others. Eventually, with the permission of the U.S. Navy, many ERA machines were sold commercially, 
Some market it under the UNIVAC name. Some of the following information is from an early Sperry Corporation film. It all started here at Sperry's Midway plant in St. Paul, Minnesota. At this site, in February 1946, a group of engineers and mathematicians launched Sperry's Twin Cities Computer Operations. The group called itself Engineering Research Associates, or ERA, following its formation one month earlier. They established a reputation for advanced technical achievement in the design and manufacturing of computers and communications equipment. Two of ERA's original founders were Yale mathematician Howard Engstrom and electrical engineer William Norris. They directed the Navy's secret cryptology section during World War II. This section of mathematicians, physicists, chess masters, bridge masters, and engineers encoded and decoded sensitive military messages. Various electronic devices aided their intelligence activities. These were prototypes of today's modern computers. As the war ended, Engstrom and Norris agreed to form a business that would expand engineering concepts developed during their naval service. They also proposed to continue much of their intelligence work for the Navy. The two were joined by Captain Ralph Meter, who supervised production of machinery for naval intelligence. The Navy, wishing to keep its technical expertise within reach following the war, gave its blessing to the project. Despite this encouragement, Engstrom, Norris, and Meter lacked the experience and capital needed to launch a business. John Parker, a successful investment banker, saved the project after a mutual friend brought it to his attention. He agreed to invest $10,000 and provide a line of credit for the new company. The founding technical group of engineers and mathematicians invested another $10,000. Parker already owned a company which contracted with the federal government, Northwestern Aeronautical Corporation, or NAC. The company produced wooden gliders for the Army Air Corps at the site of today's Midway plant. As Allied victory became apparent in 1945, Parker searched for ways to convert his company's resources to peacetime production. ERA provided the solution. When ERA began operations, it shared the same building and management with NAC. Parker became the first president of the new company. Engstrom, Norris, and Meter became vice presidents. The management of the two companies planned to phase out NAC once ERA established a track record with the federal government. As a government contractor with no previous experience, ERA was not eligible to receive major contracts. By fulfilling a smaller contract, ERA acquired the necessary experience. In August 1947, the operations of the two companies were fully integrated and NAC was phased out. As NAC was phased out, ERA received its first major contract. It included task number 13 from the Navy, the paper design of a general purpose stored program computer. Seven months later, the Navy approved the design and authorized construction of the model. Codenamed Atlas, the computer was delivered to Washington, D.C. in December 1950. In its first 500 hours, Atlas required only 16 hours of unscheduled maintenance, an unheard of performance for that time. Encouraged by their success, ERA management asked permission from the government to sell the computer commercially. The Navy approved a modified version of the Task 13 computer, and ERA renamed it the 1101. This is number 13 in the binary numbering system used by computers. Thus began the 1100 series of UNIVAC computers still in use today. The 1100 series pioneered several features which today are sometimes overlooked. The machines were built with their own air conditioning system to cool the tremendous heat generated by thousands of vacuum tubes. Known as the chiller, this cooling system used up to 35 gallons of water per minute. At a time when other manufacturers wired their computers in place and nursed them into operation in the laboratory, ERA machines were built in modules, tested, dismantled, and moved to remote locations. 
Navy specifications demanded the company become a disciplined, frugal supplier of hardware. ERA developed a reputation as a manufacturer that delivered reliable hardware on schedule. By 1951, ERA had developed a solid technical reputation. However, the company was financially pinched. John Parker, ERA's president, estimated the company would need between five and ten million dollars to successfully enter the computer market. That December, a solution arrived in the form of a merger with Remington Rand Incorporated, an office equipment manufacturer. During the next three and a half years, the ERA division of Remington Rand became a major computer supplier to the armed forces. It also began work on Atlas II for the government. This was an advanced version of ERA's first computer. ERA's progress paid off. Some analysts estimate that by 1954, ERA had earned back its entire purchase price for Remington Rand. Remington Rand, meanwhile, guided ERA into the commercial computer marketplace by positioning the company for leadership in the electronic office revolution. It also launched the first serious marketing effort of ERA's 1100 series computers. Remington Rand's strategic plan was not matched by a suitable management plan. The company did not have adequate resources and coordination. Previous mergers made the company an unwieldy federation of independent units. Seeking a stronger partner to successfully compete in the computer field, Remington Rand merged with the Sperry Corporation in June 1955. The new company became known as Sperry Rand. In 1955, Remington Rand's merger with Sperry Corporation helped provide greater resources in the face of growing competition from IBM and other companies. However, the integration of different technologies and management philosophies proved challenging. William Norris, Seymour Cray, and other longtime ERA personnel left to form a new company, Control Data Corporation, or CDC. Throughout the 1960s and beyond, Sperry continued to be a major computer technology supplier to the U.S. government, including major work for NASA. Although the ERA name faded from public view, the ERA-created legacy spawned many powerful and influential companies, earning it a vital place in the history of the computer industry.